Hey all, Carpetbagger here. It is day six of our Dixie Highway road trip. And today, I'm going to begin the video in front of the world's largest pie tin. Now, if you've been following this Dixie Highway series, you'll say, hey, wait a minute. I thought yesterday you ended the video at the world's largest pie tin. And here I am in Traverse City, Michigan at a second pie tin that claims to have been used to make the world's largest cherry pie. Now yesterday we were in Charlevoix, uh, Michigan. And I hope I'm saying that right. I'm almost sure that I'm not. Anyway, Charlevoix, Michigan in 1976 created the world's largest pie with they baked in a tin. Now the tin sits as a roadside attraction. So in 1987, Traverse City, where we're currently at, decided that they were going to beat that record and they built a bigger pie pan and built a baked a bigger pie. Now, at first that seems like, man, that seems kind of a, like kind of a jerk move. I mean, it's only it's, it's less than an hour away. So we have two competing pie pans less than an hour away from each other. But uh, Traverse City said that they were they were actually ori the original ones planning to bake the largest pie, and Charlevoix stole their idea and baked a giant pie before they had a chance. So they decided that hey, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a pie and we're gonna even make it even bigger than Charlevoix's pie. But there, there, there is some controversy because Charlevoix still recognizes their pie as being the largest because they said that when uh, when Traverse City made their pie they didn't put crust on the bottom making it a cobbler not a pie a cobbler unfortunately for uh, charlevoix guinness world records disagreed there actually is an official world record sign right here so this is recognized as the world's largest pie pan the guinness world records did not did disagreed with charlevoix said this is a genuine bona fide pie and awarded the record to the Traverse City pie. And all this is a moot point because uh, somewhere in Canada, they baked an even bigger pie that blew both of these out of the water. So this isn't even accurate. This is no longer the world's largest pie pan. And in Canada, you know, you'd say, well, well, well carpetbagger, go check out the one in Canada. Well, they didn't even bother to put their pan on the side of the road so we can enjoy it. So yes, a battle between two towns, two towns in, the, you know, in close vicinity to each other, battling over who made the largest cherry pie and in the end there's no winners in the cherry pie game but without further ado let's hit that Dixie Highway drive-in theater here the cherry bowl uh, a lot of cherries here i guess this is a, a very large cherry producing area of the country uh it says cherry bowl there on the back of the sign but it's it's a little covered in some snow right now looks like there's a little half a car run into the fence there Appears to be a random airplane sitting in this parking lot.
We are at an RV park, which I guess is clearly closed right now due to the massive amount of snow. Look at that RV, RV there yet. That's a very clever, uh, clever slogan for an RV park. And check out this. Got a uh, happy yellow dinosaur there with a little wreath around his neck, celebrating uh, the winter season. And here is the SS City of Milwaukee. It's an interesting name for a ship. I was actually born, actually born in the city of Milwaukee. It appears that in October, the city of Milwaukee becomes a ghost ship. Old camera shop here with that Kodak logo. Look at that dapper fellow there on top of the laundromat. It's driving by and noticed this really cool 3D map of Michigan here on the side of this building. Let's see, we've been, we've been all over Michigan. Some fish in the, in the river there. So yeah, Detroit, yeah, Detroit there with the auto. It's probably, I imagine that's Lansing, the capital. But uh, we went up there, all the way. I don't know why there's a fish on land and a horse in the water. But there's the Mackinac Bridge. We saw that, and then I think we are we are in this general general area somewhere. Oh, I just noticed this up here. It almost blends in. There's a giant wasp nest, or is that a bee nest? But uh, the, some sort of flying, stinging insect nest right there on uh, Lake Superior. I think that is. Here in Montague, Michigan, we have the world's largest weather vane. And I don't know, if you look really close, you can see that it does move ever so slightly. Oh, can you see that move? I think you, yeah, 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 there it goes. There it goes. Here are the official stats for the world's largest weather vane. It is 48 feet high. It uh, weighs 800 pounds and up here is the history of, of weather vanes if you want to pause the video right now you can go ahead and read that looks like the world's largest weather vane actually has its own hotel have a drive-in here it's called dogs and suds and that mascot ever so slightly uh, reminds me of goofy old tiny phone booth there unfortunately does not appear to have a phone inside this is fine stumbled upon Michigan's adventure this is the theme park owned by uh, Cedar Fair who also owns Cedar Point Knott's Berry Farm and uh, quite a few other amusement parks Unfortunately, it is closed for the season. See a big, big up and down, scary looking wooden roller coaster there. You can see a, it's like an old school wooden roller coaster there. So it's a table wild mouse coaster and a Ferris wheel there. It does look like a lot of theme parks take the carts off the Ferris wheel in the uh, winter months. Heading through downtown. Muskegon, Michigan. Here is a statue of Buster Keaton. 
the silent film star that was actually born here in Muskegon. It's his badge there, so it says Buster Keaton. And uh, I actually, believe it or not, I actually one time got to uh, try on Buster Keaton's hat. And if you actually take a look inside this camera, you can actually, actually see Buster Keaton's dead eye staring back at you through the hole. <sighs> hey Buster. It says there's a mastodon and a giant beaver over here. Um, let's go check that out. Sadly, we won't be seeing a mastodon or a giant beaver today because the Lakeshore Museum Center is closed on Sundays. I do really like the mastodon crawling out of the sewers there. It's another statue, although I'm not sure who this is. Looks like someone has put a beanie on his head to help keep him warm in these snowy times. He's like wearing a uh, Colonel Sanders bow tie. So this is Charles Hackley, Lumber Baron. It's a Lumber Baron, so he's like the villain in a Paul Bunyan story. <laughs> He applied his fortune during his lifetime to create a city of distinction. Okay, so he helped create Muskegon. So he's, he's not a bad guy, probably. And uh, let me see. He uh, made a library, a hospital, art museum, and the first kindergarten and first manual training school in the state of Michigan. And the park towards which his bronze now gazes. Well, to see where he gazes, we'll have to see his eyes. Okay, now let's see where he's gazing. Ah! That's a, that's a pretty nice park. All right. You're okay with me, Mr. Lumber Baron. Oh, I know this guy. This is Abraham Lincoln. A great man with a grating voice. Yeah, this place is absolutely crawling with statues. Here we got Ulysses S. Grant, uh, Lincoln's famous sidekick. And here we have William McKinley the third president to be assassinated, shot in 1901 by a crazed anarchist. I guess they have a little orphanage here in, uh, in uh, Muskegon. We are in Holland, Michigan, outside of IXL Machine Shop, Fabrications, Welding, and Steel Sales. And along the road here, we have a bunch of really cool metal sculptures. I guess this is Rusty the Dog. He appears to be, <laughs> appears to be a very mean dog. And uh, plus, if he bites you really hard, he'll give you tetanus. When I said tetanus, I was trying to make a rusty metal joke, but I think a normal dog can give you tetanus as well. Is that true? Can you get tetanus? I remember one time I got bit by a dog and I had to go get a tetanus shot. So, any dog can give you tetanus. Maybe he can give you double tetanus because not only is he a dog, he is made of rusty metal. Over there is a little tiny puppy waving at traffic. It's another interesting sculpture. It is, looks like this is like a welder or someone who works with metal, but the, the sculpture itself is created by welding metal. So uh, very, very interesting how the universe can fold in on itself. I don't know, is this another Paul Bunyan? Looks like he's got an ax in one hand and then maybe flowers in the other. Should get a peek into the scrap yard here. I guess the people that uh, Probably the scrapyard probably made some of those sculptures in their spare time. Uh, just look at that. Big old pile of smushed cars. Here we have a man and a team of dogs pulling a sled. Wonder, uh, wonder if one of these dogs here is uh, Balto or maybe his arch nemesis Togo. Uh, look at all those. I think they're supposed to be Huskies. Check out this guy's wearing the uh, the fuzzy coat and some sunglasses to block out the sun reflecting off the snow. It's a black squirrel. I remember when we were in Ohio a few days ago, 
I forget the name of the town, but it was the home of the black squirrels. And I didn't see any black squirrels. And now I'm here in Holland, Michigan, and I'm seeing a black squirrel. That's a pretty, pretty squirrel. Hey, hey buddy. Here buddy, do you like almonds? Turns out, he does like almonds. Here buddy. Hey there, oh, where are you going? Oh, he's eating his almond there. Hey little guy. Oh, he's so cute. You know you want it. There you go. Oh, he's gonna run over there and chow down on his almond. Here outside the library in Holland, Michigan, we have a yellow brick road, complete with Wizard of Oz characters. Who's this guy? Is this one of the one of the Munchkins? It says the Women's Literary Club of Holland. There we have. The Scarecrow, the Cowardly Lion, oh, here's Dorothy, and her little dog too, Toto, and then the Tin Woodsman there with his oil can and his axe, and oh my gosh, I love this so much. It's one of those, uh, one of, those, one of those trees, the apple tree is like, how'd you like if someone came and picked something off of you? And he's got a flying monkey on his shoulder. I love the flying monkeys. <laughs> one of my favorite all time characters in any form of media, the flying monkey. The witch here, pretty terrifying as well. Look at her steely gaze. She points her finger. Heading out to something called Windmill Island. What do you think they have on Windmill Island? Giant windmills. I wish we were going to Candy Apple Island. What do they got there? Windmills. But they ain't so big. So we've arrived here at Windmill Island, which apparently is a small Dutch themed amusement park here in Holland, Michigan. Looks like all the attractions are closed for the winter but uh, we're still allowed to walk around. And you can see over there, they do have a giant windmill here on Windmill Island. Looks like they have some exhibits on Holland, a Dutch cultural movie, and uh, this area is actually caged in. It says, please keep the gate closed. We need to keep out animals to protect the tulip bulbs. So apparently, um, I guess in the spring, you'd come here and there'd be tulips everywhere much like Holland, and uh, yeah, we will uh, step into the tulip cage here. We actually have an antique Dutch carousel in there, but of course, closed, closed for the winter, just like everything else. Tying everything together, there's a metal sculpture of a Dutchman. See, it's wearing clogs, holding tulips. Got some deer there in the field. They drive a little slower. Gotta be real safe. Here in South Haven, they have the Michigan Maritime Museum but unfortunately it's not currently open. All right, 
right, so another day sets here on the Dixie Highway, and we are still in Michigan. Now, I love Michigan. Don't get me wrong. I've had a great time last couple days. I'm ready for the next state. I'm ready to move on to Indy. Anna, which uh, we are staying here. I'm staying here tonight in uh, St. Joseph, Michigan. And then tomorrow morning we will be heading across that state line into one of my home states, Indiana. I want to thank everyone that's been watching these videos. Uh, it really feels good. I've been reading the comments. I've been trying to keep up. And it just feels really good to have you all with me. It feels like, feels like you guys are in the car with me. It's like... I'm in the driver's seat, but, but, but my kids, my thousands and thousands of kids <laughs> are in the back seat and we're all having a good time. Occasionally, you know, one of the kids may be like, eh, dad, you're an idiot. A Coney Island is different than a chili dog. It's not the same thing. It doesn't have chili powder in it. Blah. And I'm like, don't make me turn this car <laughs> around. Just kidding. I love I love every comment. I love every interaction. It's been a really cool experience to me to be able to share this stuff in uh, real time with you guys. Um, again, if you want to help with the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Hoping to get the possum pins back pretty soon. Until next time. This one's in the bag.